What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, we are going to be diving into the topic of how to keep the backside of your stainless welds from being all sugared up or oxided. So let's get into it. So this is kind of like part two and a half, we'll call it, of how to TIG weld stainless, but this also applies to basically any welding process you might use on stainless, including stick and MIG. And what we're going to be focusing on is one way to prevent oxiding or sugaring on the backside of a stainless weld. If you're familiar with stainless at all, or you watch the first two videos I have on this channel on how to weld stainless, you would know that the backside of the welds react with oxygen, creates what's called sugaring or an oxide layer, and that oxide layer basically has no corrosion resistance. Now that oxide isn't necessarily a welding defect, it doesn't necessarily reduce the strength of the weld. It can be a great place for cracks to form, and if you get the stainless super hot, you can get what's called carbide precipitation, which carbide precipitation is more or less the material itself is compromised. A lot of people assume that the oxide layer on the back of a weld is carbide precipitation, and the truth is, it can be if it's absolutely terrible, as in you cooked it beyond belief, but most of what you see on stainless is actually just an oxide layer. Therefore, if you protect it against oxygen, by some means, typically back purging or something like this solar flux, you can reduce or eliminate all the oxides on the back of what you're welding, especially on thinner stuff. So the method we're going to use today to reduce that is what's called solar flux. It's what I have in front of us. So let's take a look at this. So solar flux is basically a dry powder that comes in this tin and you mix it with methanol or denatured alcohol. Now methanol is going to be a little bit harder to get. A lot of hardware stores simply don't sell it, but you can buy it as, uh, I believe it's called gas tank heat. It's, I believe it's the yellow stuff is 100% methanol. But if you use 100% methanol, it works really good with this. However, you can use what I have here, which is denatured alcohol. All you do is you take this powder and you mix it into the liquid alcohol. You stir it up to where it's kind of like a cream of sorts, to where it's pretty thin. Not super thin like water, but soupy to a cream. And then you spread it on the back side of what you're welding. And in the case of what we have today is thinner like one millimeter or less stainless sheet. And by spreading it like paint or paste on the back side of it, TIG welding or, well, any kind of welding on the front side, the oxides won't build up on the back because this will more or less protect that stainless steel. Now this stuff does work, however, its practical applications are actually pretty limited, to be honest. In the piping world, this stuff isn't commonly used simply because how do you clean it out of the pipe once you weld it? Not to mention pipe is typically welded with an open root and you can't use this stuff really to bridge gaps. It doesn't work for that. So piping generally doesn't use this. Thicker stainless generally doesn't have an oxide layer form on the back because it doesn't get hot enough to. So this is mainly used on thinner material where corrosion resistance on the back side of what you're welding really matters. So right here is exactly what happens when there is no argon or inert gas shielding the back side of stainless and you weld it. It gets this dull black gray, sometimes red consistency to it. It is completely full of oxides. There is zero corrosion resistance here. And you guys got to remember, like this stuff is pretty thin. You can tell by what it sounds like. Well, if this is that compromise, you can imagine how fast this could theoretically rot out right through this edge here. And now you got a pinhole leak in this material. And that's why oxides tend to be more of a concern on thinner material than thicker material. Well, by spreading this solar flux junk on the back of this and welding it, in theory, none of this should be present after welding. Now, this flux will turn kind of hard, similar to like a slag after you weld it. Cleanup can be kind of a mess with it, which isn't fun, but at least the backside of the weld should have corrosion protection because oxygen didn't get into that red hot metal. Another benefit 
of this product is it tends to limit penetration to a certain extent and the molten pool tends to weld cleaner. One thing a lot of guys don't understand is that that molten pool on thin material is pretty much liquid on both the backside and the front side. That means as it's getting a reaction with oxygen on this side, it will pull through into the puddle on the face of it, the side you're welding, and it'll make the puddle sluggish, look poorly, and it'll weld far poorer than if you had a back purge with argon or nitrogen or using solar flux. So again, on critical stainless welds where corrosion resistance is an absolute, this stuff will work uh, to protect against this. Now I know you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the catch on this stuff? Well, there's a couple. The main one being, well, like I said, the cleanup kind of sucks on this stuff and it's kind of a pain to use because it may not be removable after you weld something if that weld is being trapped inside of something. The other major downside to it is this little tub is like $90, if not more, depending on where you get it from. Now keep in mind, this is a ton. Like I didn't even barely use any of this to shield what we're gonna weld today, which is good. So a little bit goes a long way, but it's still not cheap. And realistically, how effective this is, is really gonna come down to what you're actually making. If you're doing headers where fit of pipes overlap one another, like a socket weld type situation, I would recommend using this for the back side of the welds inside of the tube because the oxide that forms in there can be a great place for cracks to propagate from. And it's a header, nobody cares about what the inside looks like as far as if this stuff gets left in there. It's not gonna contaminate a water source or anything. Now keep in mind, like on these welds, technically you could grind this down quite a bit and likely get to some form of clean stainless, but this is so thin that you'd probably be almost through the material before you got rid of the oxide layer. On thicker material, that's a better solution along with using what's called pickling paste or electrolysis cleaners. Those all work really good on slightly, maybe eighth inch, three millimeter thick and thicker material. On this paper thin stuff, honestly, your best bet is using solar flux or using an actual nitrogen or argon back purge. Well, with that said, let's go and run some beads and then clean up the backside and see what we got. So here is the front side that I welded, and I purposely ran probably more amperage than I normally would weld with on this thin a material. I was welding at about 45 amps. You can see this line down the middle tells you that you have full penetration. Anytime you see a distinct line right down the middle on this thin a material, it means that you're more or less sinking in and you're fully penetrated. Now, on this one, I ran a little bit cooler. There's still somewhat of a line, uh, the start is definitely cooler, but overall, for as thin as this is, this doesn't look too bad. So I only cleaned off some of this solar flux. The flux that was near the hot weld more or less turned to like silica glass. Uh, the stuff around it was just brown and tan like this, and it just kind of dusted off with a brush. Now I took a uh, wire wheel on a grinder and just hit this a little bit so you can see it. I didn't clean it fully off, but you're definitely dealing with a little bit of a trouble, aka a problem, to get this glass or whatever this flux is off of this. So in most cases with this stuff, it's simply just left in place and over time it will wear off. And this weld, as you can see, hopefully you can see, is more or less pure silver. There is no oxide layer there. It's not all dull brown. This black stuff, that you see here, like I said, is just glass. And as a matter of fact, yeah, you can see it's still pretty hard to get it off. If I wire wheeled this really good, I'm sure I could get all of it off, but we have a completely oxide free weld and oh, look at that, it popped off itself. This looks very much like the front side, except it's pure silver and that's what you want. If this was some form of a header for a race car, and the inside of the weld look like this. You don't have any great place for cracks to propagate. 
The nice thing is this stuff really kind of limited penetration. Like the weld sunk, but it didn't like just open a hole up and melt through. So I think you might also find this a benefit on thin stuff to help prevent blowing holes. Now keep in mind, if you MIG weld this or you're just really hot with the TIG, it's still gonna pop right through this stuff and make a hole. It's just that it's a little bit more forgiving, I think because this stuff is pulling heat out of the backside of it a little bit. But overall, it worked very good. It's just how practical is this for your application? Hard to say. Here's a direct comparison on the backside of the weld between the solar flux on the left and unshielded on the right. The first thing you'll probably notice is the bead profile is completely smooth with solar flux. That's very typical. The welds on the right that were unshielded typically react with oxygen and it's going to form sort of like a ripple pattern and you're not going to easily be able to clean that area. As a matter of fact, I took a wire wheel on a grinder for a significant amount of time on that unshielded one on the right and could not get all of that gray oxide out. That will visibly rust. Considering how thin of material this is, that could pose an issue where the material itself could rust through. And you don't see it, but the unshielded welds have a dull gray color that is more or less a little bit deeper than surface around the weld in the heat affected zone and that too may also rust. This is a great comparison when it comes to pipe welding what you could expect the inside of the pipe to look like without proper shielding. Clearly that rough weld on the right you would not want in a pipe that held something like milk. You could have bacteria or all sorts of stuff living in that because how porous the overall surface is. And on a final note, I didn't take arc footage of it, but the weld pool is so much cleaner and less sluggish and just welds a lot better with the solar flux or for that matter a back purge than just letting the backside be exposed to oxygen. And you're going to notice a massive difference on thin material. On thick material where you don't have that reaction because it's simply not hot enough on the backside, it's less of an issue, but thin stuff, definitely worth it to shield the back. Well, let's go to conclusion. So is solar flux effective? Absolutely it is. Is it the most practical junk you could use to back shield a stainless weld? I would say definitely not. Now, I was able to wire wheel it a little bit better to get better results, but realistically, most times you're gonna use this, you're simply probably not gonna clean off the back side. So definitely don't do this on anything that requires drinking water or where the contaminants that that stuff is could find its way into your body somehow. AK, don't be using this junk on brewery equipment and yada, 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 you get the picture. Now, no doubt the better corrosion resistance of the backside of the welds with this stuff is an actual benefit. Like I said in numerous other videos on stainless I've done as well as in this video, that oxide layer that builds up Oftentimes you gotta grind significantly through the surface to get rid of enough of that to where it doesn't rust there anymore. And that's where this stuff really shines is there's certain things that purging the inside of is easy, like say a header or some tube or something. But when it comes to like, I don't know, a big stainless steel maple syrup tank, that's, you know, I don't know, two by four foot or something, this stuff would work really good, could be cleaned off fairly easy, you know, with a wire wheel and some cleaner and you'd be fine. So this stuff does have practical applications. It's just for an average person. I don't know that you would find this better than using argon. In my personal experience, I've always found back purging with argon to be easier than using this stuff. And that's why in the next video on how to weld stainless, I'm gonna talk about ways to back purge and we're gonna do some welds with back purge to show the difference. And I'm also gonna give you a lot of tips on how to make homemade back purge rigs for unusual joints, such as inside corner joints on larger items where you don't wanna purge the whole thing with argon because it's wasteful. So anyways, with that said, hopefully you learned something. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to leave them. Until next time.